Once again, thank you for tuning in to our weekly adult Bible class. May God's richest blessing, grace and peace be upon you and your family today. This morning, I'm going to read only one verse. It is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Shall we pray? Dear God, please open all of our understanding as to your word today. Speak to each one of our hearts this morning. Bless every hearer far and near. Help me as I teach. Grant me your unction and the anointing of your Holy Spirit so that I can teach it clearly and boldly. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name we pray. All God's people say, Amen and Amen. Man, this morning I've entitled my message as Paul's Eulogy of Praise. Paul's Eulogy of Praise. You remember last week we learned about Paul's apostolic greetings. Indeed, Paul talked about three things that constitute a Christian. Three things that define what a true Christian is. Can you remember them? Now, what are those three things that Paul said? Number one, he talks about our calling. Our calling is to be what? Is to be a saint. That means we got to live holy lives. That's what a Christian is. A Christian is a saint. They are to live holy lives. That's our calling. Then number two, he talks about our commitment. Our commitment is to be faithful. That's what a Christian is. Is it not? We are to be faithful in all things. Then number three, he talks about our comfort. Our comfort is that we are in Christ Jesus. And because we are in him, therefore we can experience his grace and his peace in our lives. As mentioned in chapter 1, verse 2, where Paul says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, after talking about verse 1 and verse 2, Paul just couldn't help. When it comes to verse 3, but to burst forth in eulogy or praise to the living God. And this is what I call Paul's eulogy of praise. Now, the word blessed found in chapter 1, verse 3, in the Greek language. It means, elogitas. That's where we get our English word, eulogy. I'm sure you know what eulogy means. That's the word we use for the funeral service, where we see the loved one of the deceased say good things or kind words about the deceased. The eulogy can come from one person or from few persons, each taking their turns to eulogize the deceased. And that's what Paul is doing right here at verse 3. Now, there are three things that Paul eulogizes about God right here, which I want you to see. First of all, Paul eulogizes God for his goodness. 
Look at chapter 1, verse 3. Paul said, Blessed, blessed, blessed be who? The God. You see, the emphasis is on this God. Not any other gods with a small g, but the God with a capital G. Notice how Paul addressed God right here. He called him the God, which means there's no other gods beside him. Now, you may ask the question, who is this God actually? What is he like? What kind of a God do we serve? First of all, Paul said that he is a good God. You remember in Mark chapter 10, verse 17 and verse 18, there was a rich ruler that came to Jesus. You know what he said? He said to Jesus, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Verse 18. Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? Notice what he said. No one is good but one. But one only. And that is God himself. God is good. Amen. Is God good? What is your answer? Is God good to your life and family? In Psalms 34 verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is what? That the Lord is good. We often hear people say, so and so is good. But I tell you, none can be compared with our God. Our God is good. I have been serving the Lord for the past 39 years. And all that He had done in my life were all good. Now, what exactly good means? When come to God, it means he doesn't do harm or evil towards anyone. That he is kind and he is gracious to all and he longs to bring joy and blessing to all his creation. In Psalms 145 verse 9 says, The Lord is good to all. He is good to all. In Psalms 33 verse 5 says, The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. So firstly, Paul says, He is a good God. Then number two, Paul says, He is a giving God. Is God a giving God? Yes or no? Of course he is. Look at chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. That two word, blessed us. That speaks of him as a giving God. Read again James chapter 1 verse 5. It says, But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives, look at the word, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. It says, If you then been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more will your father who is in heaven? Give. Give. Give what? Give what is good to those who ask him. So do you understand who our God is? That he is a good God. That he is a giving God. So we have touched on number one. Paul eulogized God 
for his goodness. Next, number two, Paul eulogized God for his gifts. Look at chapter 1, verse 3, please. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual, what is the word? Blessing. The word is what? Blessing. And that is his gifts. Now we can learn several things right here. Number one, we learn concerning the sponsor of these gifts. This is found in chapter 1 verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. The word who here refers to the sponsor. And there is none other than the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the giver of all this blessing. He is the source of it all. And all blessing that we had today, remember this, all comes from Him. We ourselves actually don't own anything. We can't claim anything as ours. Because when we came into this world, we came naked, we came into this world, empty. So when we leave this world, we're going to go empty-handed as well. We can't even take a thing out of this world. This is what Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 15 says. As he came from his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came. And he shall take nothing. Look at the word. Take nothing from his labor, which he may carry away. Look at the word. Carry away in his hands. So we have seen the sponsor of these gifts. Then number two, we are going to see the scope of these gifts. See how far how wide is God's gift? Look at chapter 1 verse 3 again, please. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with what? The word is every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. That's the scope of his blessing. The word is every. The word every means... Everything included. Not one is left out. Not one is missing. Not one is exempted. That's what every means. Amen. That's how God gives to each one of us. He gave us every spiritual blessing. Next week, if God's willing, we're going to touch on verse 4 to verse 14. That's where we're going to study all the blessing in detail that God has given to each one of us. So we have learned the sponsor of these gifts is God himself. The scope of this gift is every. It is without limit. Then number three, we're going to learn about the substance of this gift gifts. Go back to chapter 1 verse 3 again, please. It says here, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, notice the word, spiritual blessing. With every spiritual blessing. That's the substance of the gifts. It is what? It is spiritual blessing. It is spiritual in nature. That's what God has given us, has blessed us with. And that is He blesses us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Can I ask you this morning, what are you chasing today? Is it just 
material blessing? If you are only chasing material blessing, it is not going to last. It is only temporal. But there is another blessing which you and I must seek after. And this is what I call spiritual blessing. This is what the Bible exhorting all of us to go after. Now the word spiritual in Greek means pneumatica. It means pneuma. It means spirit or wind. This is a totally different kind of blessing altogether. Now these are blessings which our eyes cannot see. This is the kind of gifts that God gives that will last forever throughout all eternity. Look at what Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 says. If then you were raised with Christ, what must you do? Seek, seek, seek one. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Look at verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. You see, what you and I need to learn is this. That there are things in life more valuable than money. There are things in life more valuable than money. There are things more valuable than just houses or car or clothes. Ask yourself this question. Which will last in the long run? Is it money? or spiritual blessing. Now, if you go only for material blessing, it will only last for this life. But after this life, what you need is actually spiritual blessing because it is the spiritual blessing that will last right through eternity. And that's what we're going to study on this coming week. That is from chapter 1, verse 4, right up to verse 14. So we have touched on the sponsor of this gift, the scope of these gifts, the substance of these gifts. Now look at the site, S-I-T-E, the site of these gifts. Look at chapter 1, verse 3 again, please. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, Notice the word, in the heavenly places. Note where these blessings are located. It says it is located in the heavenly places. Now, this is kind of frustrating, isn't it so? I mean, in the heavenlies. You may ask the question, how am I going to get them? Am I right? Why can't God bring it down a little bit lower? I mean, we are all thankful for all this blessing. But why it is all way up there? How am I going to reach them? And this is where we come to the fifth point. That is the sphere of these gifts. Yes, we have touched on the sponsor of this gift, the scope of this gift, the substance of this gift, the sight of this gift. Now, number five, we're going to touch on the sphere of these gifts. Look at chapter 1, verse 3. It says here that it is in Christ. The sphere of all our blessing lies in these two words. In Christ alone. It is only through Christ that you and I can get these spiritual blessings. The non-believers who are outside of Christ can only experience the material blessing, but not this spiritual blessing which Paul talks about right here. Only believers can experience 
both. When I say both, I mean the believers can experience not just the spiritual blessing, the believers can also experience the material blessing as well. Now, let me prove that to you. Now, if you read John chapter 3, verse 27, it says, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him. Look at the word. From, from where? From heaven. It means what you get from God is not just spiritual blessing. What you get from God is also material blessing as well. And this is what I call family blessing. This means in Christ, God not only bestow on you material blessing, but he also add on for you spiritual blessing as well. Yes, God can bless others outside of the faith, which we call common grace or common blessing. He showed them blessing, no matter who they are. They may be his child, they may not be his child. But we see it every day. All this blessing, don't we? The sun shines every day. Not just for the Christian, but also for the unsaved. And he also gave rain to all. Not just to his children, but also to all those who don't believe in him. Even he gives sunshine and rain to those who curse God right to his face. He also gave what? Air for us to breathe. He don't just give it to Christian. He also gives to those who don't even know God at all. And that is what I call common grace or common blessing, which God gave to non-believers. But then there is such a thing we call family blessing. And this is only given to those that are Christian. It is only to those that are safe will receive not just spiritual blessing, but also material blessing as well. Look at Romans 8 verse 32. It says here, He who did not spare his own son, talking about God, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Look at the word, all things. The word all things doesn't just include spiritual blessing only. It also includes material blessing. And it all comes through his son. So if you and I reject the Son of God, you are rejecting the blessing of God that is meant for our life because it is only in Christ we are able to receive this blessing. But once you are outside of this sphere, once you are out of Christ, when you are not in Christ, you will not experience this blessing at all. So not only we touch number one, Paul eulogized God for his goodness. Number two, Paul eulogized God for his gifts. Then lastly, number three, Paul eulogized God for his grace. Look at chapter one, verse three. Again, please. It says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed, what is the next word? Who has blessed what? Us. You may ask the question, who is the us here? The us right here is the sin that mentioned in chapter 1 verse 1. This blessing doesn't apply to everybody that lives on the earth. No, it only applies to those that are saved. The us here applies to all born again believers. The us here apply to those that are faithful, the earth here apply to all those that are in Christ. The earth here also apply to all those who receive grace from God the Father. The earth here also apply to all those who receive peace from God. 
The us here refer to the believers. We are the one. They are blessed with all this spiritual blessing. But who are we actually? If you look at ourselves, we are just nobodies. The Bible says we are sinners. We are Gentiles. We have no God in our heart. We are out of the commonwealth of Israel. But look at it. This blessing was given to us. Not because we deserve it. It is because we don't deserve it. This is why we call it grace. It is all because of grace. Now, some of you may ask the question, how can I become a part of the earth here? How did I get into this verse 3? The answer is found at verse 4. It says, just as he chose us in him, chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So the answer is what? How to get into this earth? The answer is he got to choose you so that you can be a part of the earth. That's where his grace come in, into the picture. You know what? God has named this church well. What is the name of our church? Tabernacle of Grace. Thank God for all the blessing you and I had received as a church. It is all because of His grace in our life. Let me ask you in closing. Are you part of the earth? this morning. Have you come to know Christ? Have you experienced the new birth yourself? Have you been born again? And there's only one way that you and I can get into this blessing. You must know Jesus as your Savior and your Lord today. So if you want Christ to be your Savior, what must you do? All you need to do is to repeat this prayer after me. Pray this sincerely from your heart. Acknowledge your sin and invite him to be the savior of your life. Do you want to do that this morning? If so, repeat this prayer after me. Say from the depths of your heart. Say this. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner today. Wash me and cleanse me with your precious blood. Forgive all my sins. This morning, I want to open wide my heart to you. I want to invite you to come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. Save me today. Embrace me into the us this morning. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for giving me your eternal life. Thank you for coming into my heart and life. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Shall we close this session with a word of prayer? Dear Lord, we thank you for all the spiritual blessing which you gave to us this morning. Thank you for including each one of us into the us. Thank you for your goodness in our life. Thank you for the gifts which you have given to us. Thank you for your grace. Indeed, you are the God of grace. Thank you for showing us your favor when we don't even deserve it. So this morning, we want to elogize you for that. We bless you from the depths of our soul and heart. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name, we all pray. All God's people say, 
Amen and Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Amen.